everyone, welcome to Watch It, Paint It. I'm back painting another hero from Zombicide Green Horde by Simon Games. You absolutely crushed the last motivation challenge. Congratulations, well done, thank you very much. Uh, maybe it was too easy again, but you did it in a few hours. So, third and final challenge. I'm seriously running out of time now, but if we break some records, I thought, we, I, I'll do you another one. I, I won't pack. I'll just go on holiday. So, the current record for likes is 209 likes, and that's for uh, Lil Ned. Benson got that one. So, if we can get 210 likes, I'll squeeze in one more Green Horde video before I go away. Alternatively, just 65 subscribers in a day is the current record. Beat that, I'll do a video. Or the third and final one, two Patreon signups in one day is the most I've ever had. So if we get three, I'll squeeze in one final Green Horde video. Anyway, let's get on with some painting. As with the other hero uh, and the catapult, I've just shown you the priming. This is Army Painters Color Primer. I'm using Leather Brown. Give it a good shake, one to two minutes of shaking. Go outside, don't breathe this stuff in. I'm actually wearing a mask. I'd advise they're not very expensive. Just get one. This stuff stinks. It cannot be not be good for you and then just apply a light coat even coverage left to right right to left and once you're done turn that can upside down and spray it until the color stops coming out that's just going to clear the nozzle and stop it clogging for the next time you come to use that after the prime is done come back inside wait for it to dry make sure you wait for that to dry that's very important <laughs> i've just shown you asim there and that's how he looks with the primer on i'm going to be using survivor skin first and this is the paint on his skin he's only got his face and two hands showing so there's not much skin to paint uh, I'm using my detail brush by the Army Painter here. And again, I'm going to try and stick to the Army Painter's zombie side colour set, but I'm not going to be able to do it entirely for this model. I don't have the right colours, or the, I, I'll tell you what you can use alternatively just in case you've got that set. Here I'm using Necromancer's coat, cloak, not coat, and uh, filthy suit. I've mixed that about 50 50, just lightening the grey up a bit. I'm going to use that as the base coat to all of his grey, that's his top and the robe hanging between his legs. And then I'm gonna use Neat Necromancer's cloak, and so just the darker gray, and that's to paint in those sheaths for his dagger, the handle for his sword, so the wrap around the handle, and then he's got a sheath for his sword down his back as well. So I'll just be painting that in. Again, I'm just using the detail brush. This model's small. I, I think I'd forgotten how small zombie side models were. I've been in massive darkness painting the big roaming monsters for too long. Also just doing his beard there, he's got a Necromancer Cloak-esque coloured beard. So do that the same and just catching two eyebrows. That's quite difficult to do, take your time with that. So here as I mentioned I'm going to use a different colour that is an army paint, a zombie side set. This is Turquoise by Vallejo. Now looking at the card art, it's quite close between green and blue. So I think you could use something like Scaly Hide perhaps, or mold, not Moldy Close, Scaly Hide. I go, go for that. Um, from the zombie side set if you've got that and that will give a more light green look now uh, it was hard for me to choose this color I, I I ummed and ahed. I mean it's always difficult to tell what the lighting's like on the on the card art so you can never quite tell the color exactly I, I feel like in Simon games as uh, models in the uh, concept art but I just I like turquoise and I think this game is going to be covered in dirt and blood and blacks and greys and browns. So it's nice to have a character with a really bright colour. So there I'm just using Abomination Gore, the red, and just painting that scarf that's hanging down out of his cloak, which I accidentally paint, painted turquoise. Zombie skins out, and that's to paint the handle of his dagger. And next is Claymore Blade, so I'm going to play, paint the blades. So that's his dagger and his scimitar. Yeah. Please be right. I'm sure somebody will correct me in the comments if I've got the wrong type of sword. But for once, I may may well know the weapon. I'm quite chuffed with that. I'm going to go with it. I think I'm right. Yeah, definitely. So after that, I'm just getting his belt buckle. And he's got a stud on his belt. And then I'm catching. He's got sort of like gems or just metallic bits on the sheath of his dagger on the front. They're really, really, really small. They're quite hard to see. But there's larger ones on the sheath for his sword on the back. Much easier to do. So we're on to washing now. I'm going to use Flesh Wash. Again, this isn't from the Zombie Side set, but it's by Army Painter. And I'm going to be doing that on his hands and his face. Uh, if you don't have that, the Zombie Skin one's fairly similar. You could, you could easily use that instead. Next is Blue Ink. This isn't in the Zombie Side set, but it's by the Army Painter again. And it's a blue shade. So here you could be using, if you painted it more like that scaly hide or you wanted it to go more green, you could easily use the plague shader, the green shader, 
or if you want it more purpley, darker blue, toxic shader, or something generic, just use one of the browns or black shaders. Hit, hit. Speaking of which, here's the Survivor shader from the Zombie Side set. This is the black shader, and I'm just using this to tarnish all of his metals. So, or just basically the hilt of his sword, pommels of his sword, the blades of his sword, and I'm also just going to catch those sheaves just to darken it down a little bit. Dead Black's out next, and this is to paint in his eyeball socket. So I'm copying Benson. He always does this step. I often miss this, but it does give a nice effect around his eyeballs, which you then paint in on top of that black. So fill his sockets with a black. Then fill in some two eyeballs, one on each side of his face. That's how faces work. And then after that, just a tiny, tiny, so down to my smallest brush, my insane detail, and just giving him a little dab, two pupil in each eye there, taking my time with that, doing it as carefully as I can. And realizing I should use the hobby holder, so I've attached it now. I don't want to keep touching his head and rubbing off this paint. I'm going to start highlighting up the skin next. So Survivor skin is out. My insane detail brush is in use, and I'm just painting in all of the raised parts of his hands and face, his nose, his cheeks, uh, his lips, and his fingers, basically. And then after that, I'm going to mix in half white with it, so 50-50 white and Survivor skin, and just highlight his knuckles, his nose, and his lip. Uh, Necromancer cloak next. This just to paint back in his eyebrows, make sure I can see them. Highlight the sheaf, so along the edges of all, all, both his sheaf, the dagger, and the one in his back. And then I should also do his buckles on his shoes there, but I missed that. I'll come back to that later, trust me. Desert yellow next, and this is to paint on top of the, the brown, so that sort of padded, uh, padded leather that he's wearing. So I just left that as the leather brown. I'm going to use that as the shader, and then I'm going to paint on top using Vallejo's desert yellow. If you don't have that, if you mix leather brown and zombie skin together, about 50-50, Judge it by eye, you'll get a very similar colour to this. So I'm just going along. I've painted in the patch on his leg, just left the leather brown showing through in the in the recesses. And then on his on his shoulder, he's got this padded studded leather. No, it's padded, it's definitely padded. And I'm just painting each little pad, each little raised part, as well as along the edge. I'm then gonna get my dry brush out and generously I would say dry brush this onto his shoes. So again, leaving that leather brown in the recesses as though it's the shader but bringing it up to more of a yellow look. And now this is why I'm painting back in the Necromancer's Club afterwards. I was leaving that step it there, so, <laughs> so otherwise you just have dry brushed over this and you'd need to do it. I'm also painting him some soles. They don't look like they're on the art, but I think it just makes those boots look better and more realistic. On to highlighting the Necromancer's uh, Cloak that was on his, on his top. And I'm going to be using Filthy Suit Knee. I probably should have mixed in some Necromancer's Cloak in hindsight. You'll see at the end, I think the contrast is a little bit too harsh. Although, you've got to remember, you're seeing this much closer and in better detail. You've probably maximized this on your screen, and you can see this a lot better than you could in real life. So it, it looks much, much better. All these models, if you're new to the channel, I say this periodically, and I'm sure you all know, you all paint. They look a lot, lot better once they're a foot to three foot away, which is much more realistic when you're playing the game. So that was just painting on all the raised parts of his top. And then after that, I'm going to mix in Filthy Suit, with white, white primer by Vallejo, but if you haven't got that, use Brain Matter Beige or any white, it doesn't really matter. I'm just mixing that to make a lighter gray. I'm using my insane detail brush. I'm just very carefully adding a line to the very edges of all those raised parts, all those folds in his top along the, the rim of the bottom of his top as well, just making that look like the light's catching the edges. Leather browns out. This is to one touch up all of the belts that I just caught with paint, paint back in some belts that I painted over and paint the straps back in and on the uh, the sheaths for his, for his blades just paint the straps uh, carefully where the, where the shader had caught them. Claymore blade back out just to highlight back up those blades so I'm just going to apply a thin layer down the, very, down the sort of sides and edges of his scimitar and basically all of his dagger just bring that back up to the colour it was just leaving it shaded near the, near the hilt of the dagger and then, as I mentioned before, his buckle and those little gems that he's got on the straps of his sheaths. Abomination Gorge is to paint in some more of that red that's just, just been caught by the turquoise and the shade. So just bring that back to the colour it was. And then I'm going to use Orange 3 by War Colors. I got this in my model box opening. If you've not checked that out, give it a quick look. It's something interesting, something fun. If you're familiar with Loot Crate, it's similar to that. And that's a random paint that I got. And it's a very nice layer paint. But if you haven't got that... Uh, jumpsuit, prison jumpsuit, that's the orange by the Army Paint and Zombie side set if you've got that, or any orange, just make sure you apply it really, really thinly to the edge 
of that red um, scarf. And then after that, turquoise is back out. And I'm just going to bring back in the original turquoise color. Obviously, if you're using scaly hide, as I mentioned, you could use uh, use that instead at this point. Just use the same base color and paint all those raised bits. So he's got lots of sort of ripples in his hat. He's got lots of folds uh, along the, uh, the neck cloak. I'm sorry, I don't know the terms for this dress. This is a sort of an Arabian night, isn't it? It's very, very cool. I've not got a model like this at all, so it's nice to paint something completely fresh. And then I'm going to mix in foul green. That's also by Vallejo. About 50-50. I'm bringing it back more towards that greeny colour, but it's it's just more like a light turquoise now. And I'm just going to go around the very, very edges, the very most raised parts of all of those folds and down the edge of the, his sort of dress at the bottom and the tip of his hat and the very tops of each fold of, of his hat I also did. Uh, just taking my time there and blending it as best I can. After that, I'm going to use dead black regiment brush. Yay! I think this is the only time I've used the regiment brush. Nice, quick, easy bit. And I'm just going to paint the, the base black. That's what I do with all my heroes in Zombie Side and Massive Darkness. It's the easiest one. And I'd advise do it anyway. It doesn't take very long. And if no matter what you do to the base later, black's probably a decent start to that base. And then I'm not happy with the grey. I, I, I didn't like the, the blending uh, as much. I said that the contrast was too high, in my opinion. So I've mixed some Survivor Shader with Glaze Medium. That basically just waters it down quite heavily. But the glaze is supposed to make it sit more on the surface than than going to the recesses. But then I mixed it with shader, so the two things having like a complete opposite effect and not working very well. Um, but that I just applied that to the top. But if you just got the highlighting done a, a little bit better than better than I did, I think it would look better to begin with anyway. But that just smoothed it over a little bit for me. I'm going to use uh, zombie skin, not survivor skin. Don't use survivor skin. Zombie skin. That's the sort of pale yellow. And that's just to highlight up his boots. So I'm just catching all, like, all the raised parts. So his sort of toe and there's some ripples and he's got like a patch on his boot as well. So I'm just catching that. And then I'm just going to catch the edge of his sleeves and the edge of that padded leather that he's got on his on his top. And that's just going to make it look a little bit more realistic. Finally, I'm going to add some blood. There's blood on the artwork and those suds were just too plain and boring for me. So I'm just adding like, a splatter of blood onto his scimitar and onto his dagger as well. Now, you can miss this step out, it's up to you. You might want to add more blood. I quite wanted to splat some blood on his top, just to because I don't like the grey very much, but I didn't know how to make that look realistic, so I, I, I didn't bother. But you can do whatever you want. Add, add as much blood as you like. And a, a good tip if you're new to painting, zomb the zombies are probably the best to start with, um, but the heroes are good too. And you can use blood to cover up mistakes, as I often did when I was new to it. That took an hour and 24 minutes. I think that's pretty fast. Uh, I'm happy with it. I like him. He's going to look great on the table. Uh, well, let me know in the comments what you guys think. And by all means, join in the next motivation challenge. Let's try and get another video out. I, I can do it. I can do it. With your help, I will smash one out for you. <laughs> Thank you all very much for watching.